The OKC Thunder weren't supposed to do this. This team was not supposed to be, you know, number one in the West at this point in the season. Now, I know their seed has been fluctuating a little bit. They've been around, you know, the number one, number two seed. But, man, this OKC team has been real, real impressive. And if there's any indicator that this team can win a championship, possibly this year as, you know, the third youngest team in the league, if I'm not mistaken, well, they're top five in both offense and in defensive categories at this point in the season and that is extremely extremely impressive for a team like i said that's the third youngest team in the league they have taken just leaps and bounds so quickly and it's been really amazing to watch but specifically they've been led by who i think should be the nba's mvp this year shea gilgis alexander 31.2 points per game 54.6 percent from the field 37 percent from three 88% from the free throw line with a career high six and a half assist and 2.1 steals. I mean, he has been excellent on both ends of the court and he's probably been the most consistent player in the NBA too. There's pretty much not many games where he gets under 30 points and five assists. I mean, he's just so consistent. His mid-range game is probably the smoothest in the NBA right now. He's just so crafty. He is just probably the craftiest player in the NBA at the moment too. I mean, he is just so fun to watch, but he's also kind of got, you know, an old school feel to his game. It's very like meticulous, very methodical, but he's also just got such great footwork and fundamentals that it's really hard to stop him. And on top of that, right, he's a 6'6 point guard with length and size who can defend really well. And he's just the perfect prototypical point guard um, for today's modern NBA. And like I said, with that, he should be the NBA MVP. I don't know why he's not in the MVP conversation more. I don't know why he's not the top candidate, but he should be MVP. It's probably either him or or Jokic, but just considering the season the Thunder have had, considering really the past couple years SGA has had, I would argue he should be the NBA's MVP, especially if the Thunder end up getting that one seed over the Denver Nuggets. I know you can make an argument that Jokic should be the MVP, but at this point, all things considered, I do believe Shea is the NBA's MVP this year. So he's been the driving force behind this team. If Shea doesn't play, you know, I don't know where this team would be at. I think they'd still be a solid, you know, maybe playing team around 500. But Shea just takes this team to a whole other level, and you can see that every night. Next, though, we got to go to Chet Holmgren. I mean, he has just been excellent for a rookie. I mean, there's not many rookies ever that have done what he's doing. I mean, 17 points per game, 54% of the field, 39% from three, 78% from the free throw line with 7.8 rebounds, 2.7 assists, in 2.5 blocks. I can tell you he's probably one of the only rookies in NBA history to put up these type of numbers. I mean, the other one is, you know, obviously Victor Webb and Yama, who may beat him out for Rookie of the Year. But if not, Chet should probably get second for Rookie of the Year because the way he has played, man, he's just phenomenal. He looks like a seasoned NBA veteran. His efficiency, how comfortable he looks out there on the court, his shot blocking ability, all those things that we saw at Gonzaga and in high school have translated perfectly. It almost doesn't even seem like he missed a year to begin his NBA career. I mean, he's just been that good you know the hope with chet and with guys like victor webb and yama is you hope they stay healthy and i'm hoping chet can you know avoid any major you know foot injuries knee injuries ankle injuries because man if he keeps up the way he's playing now and just carries that over to the next you know three four five seasons you know there's a world where chet is probably not only the best center in the nba but he's probably a top five player in the game too i mean that's the way you know his trajectory is going right now and man he has just been fun to watts but his shooting efficiency and shot blocking ability for a rookie center is just super impressive i mean i don't think anybody expected him to be this polished coming in the nba i mean i thought he'd be kind of more of a raw prospect right may take a while for you know his scoring to develop and i thought you know his defense would translate over at first which it has but i thought you know his offense would take a little bit of time to develop but man i mean chet has proven me wrong on that and he has been so so good and you know I almost would make the argument that he could be Rookie of the Year just specifically because of the impact he's had on this Thunder team and considering they have been hovering around that, you know, number one, number two seed all year. But obviously, though, you know, women Yama's putting up better stats and, you know, maybe Chet won't get Rookie of the Year. I don't know. We will see. But either way, Chet has been excellent. And next, we got to go to the second leading scorer of this team, Jalen Williams. Man, you know... Everything about his game just screams future superstar, right? Like the combination of him and Shea in that OKC Thunder backcourt, man, that's going to be good for quite a long time. Probably the biggest thing I'm impressed with Jalen Williams, much like Chet Holmgren, is his efficiency. I mean, just how efficient Chet and Jalen Williams have been, you know, for their first year, couple years in the NBA. I, I mean, I don't think I've seen many rookies just 
be this efficient, really. I mean, Jalen Williams, right? 53.9% from the field, 45% from three. You just don't see that from a guard every day. On top of that, he's put up 19.2 points per game. So to be that efficient as a second-year guard in this volume, a guy that can play point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, right? Whatever you need because of his size and strength and length. I mean, it's impressive, right? We just haven't seen many, you know, second-year guards play this way. He's got such a unique feel for the game, but he really just takes such good shots. And even when he takes tough shots, it's like he's got a comfortability level where he can just pretty much make anything. And you can tell he's putting a lot of work in the offseason, specifically on his mid-range game. You know, maybe he even, you know, spent some time in the offseason training with Shea. He's kind of got a similar feel there, too. On top of that, he's also a 6'5 point guard, so him and Shea got good size as well, you know, can play multiple positions. But yeah, Jalen Williams, he's the perfect player for this team and the perfect really second option to Shea Gillis Alexander because he doesn't just have to play, you know, on the ball with point guard. He's a very good off the ball shooter as well. He's good at attacking closeouts, super athletic, right? Like I said, his mid range game is really smooth and polished as well. So Jalen Williams has been excellent. Obviously, you know, I made a video on the players draft before him, which did pretty well. I believe that was a couple months ago, but. Yeah, I've been wanting to talk about OKC Thunder for a while, and Jalen Williams, man, he's been one of my favorite players to watch this year. Just a super fun player. Um, just a really calm, you know, cool and composed um, guy out there on the court, and yeah, he's just fun to watch. Um, but kind of the other guy I want to mention on this roster too, obviously I can go over a lot of different guys, right? Like with, you know, Lou Dort, right? Who's obviously averaging, you know, a career 40% from three. I could even go over guys, you know, like Isaiah Joe, right? He's also 40% three-point shooter, which this Thunder team, they've been excellent three-point shooting. But a guy I really want to get to right now is Gordon Hayward because look, I know, you know, he's had his injury issues, right? But he's been playing well in Charlotte, at least when he has been healthy. But man, I do think he can really help this team, you know, make possibly a deep playoff run this year because he's really the only, you know, veteran type player on this roster, but he brings so much just experience and mentorship. He's just a very high IQ player. And look, I know his stats so far with the Thunder haven't really shown that, right? You know, in nine games, at least as I'm recording this video, he's only, you know, averaging three points, 32% from the field, only three rebounds and 1.2 assists, but we got to keep in mind hasn't played you know too many games over the past couple years and he only played you know 25 with charlotte before coming over to okc and he's really just you know had a lot of injury issues since coming to charlotte so we got to keep that in mind too might take him a little bit while to ramp up but have to imagine he'll be ready to go for the playoffs with all that being said right given that the thunder got you know a veteran which they obviously really need a veteran forward kind of a do-it-all swingman guy like gordon hayward i think this is really going to propel them to maybe make a deeper playoff run than most thought because I think I feel like kind of the sentiment right now is that the Thunder could get upset by let's say you know a playing team like you know the Suns or the Lakers or the Warriors which by the way that's crazy to say that all three of those teams are playing teams but I think there's a possibility and at least kind of a sentiment that they could get upset because they don't have much playoff experience and because you know teams like the Suns the Lakers the Warriors have a lot of playoff experience but I think with that you know Shea I think people forget, right? Obviously, he's a young player, but this is already like his fifth year in the league. He's had some playoff experience with the Clippers and OKC before, and this may be his time to shine and lead this team. But with that, having another uh, you know veteran like Gordon Hayward, who's had this playoff experience, that is so big for this Thunder team. I can't you know overstate how good that's going to be and how needed he's going to be in the playoffs once he starts ramping up, you know, and getting more minutes. So. That's the last thing I want to talk about with the Thunder, but yeah, this team has surpassed all expectations. I mean, I definitely thought they were going to be a playoff team, right? Probably fifth or sixth seed, maybe get, you know, 44 to 48 wins. Man, I mean, they have just been so, so fun to watch, and I am so glad that they are number one seed in the West because they just play such a fun brand of basketball to watch. They play the right way. They play defense, and they've been awesome this season. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.